Amen. He is good, isn't he? Yeah, he's good. Oh, just let your heart stay there for a moment. Um, The Lamb of God who's seated on a throne. One day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he's Lord. And we will do that then. We get to do that now. Oh, let us be a, a, a church that lifts up the name of Jesus. He's good. Amen. 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 Thank you, worship team. That was awesome. Hey, uh, all right, first of all, uh, ages five and under, you are dismissed for kids' ministry, as well as Ignite Jensen, why don't you, why don't you wave your hand like you always do, and you can follow that way. By the way, um, if you are a part of, if you are age fifth grade through eighth grade, or parents of fifth through eighth graders, uh, tonight they're doing a little Ignite, kind of get to know you, get to know the ministry and the leadership social and that is at Chris and Allison Johnson's house. So there's more information over there. Um, and we would love to just invite you to that this evening. Um, can I just share a few things going on in our community as we, as we open up God's word this morning and ask him to speak? Uh, we have some great things going on here at this church. Um, first of all, two weeks from now, I believe, September 8th, is that two weeks? Two weeks from now um, is our baptism service, okay? Yes, thank you. Um, There are many, many people that are going to declare and proclaim that Jesus has changed their lives and they are making a commitment to follow Jesus in front of their church family. We are going to have, um, yeah, we're just going to have an awesome celebration. So again, if you are here this morning and you've said, I have decided to follow Jesus, I am a child of the living King. Um, He asks us to be baptized as a symbol that proclaims publicly how he has transformed us internally. And so so we just want to welcome you to that. We would love to talk to you about that. And it's going to be just a sweet and special service. So um, that's two weeks from now. Um, Also, uh, each week we kind of give this update, but baby Olive, who we are fasting for, praying for, contending for, she's still fighting for her life. It is just this miraculous story that we're just trusting the Lord with. And we just say, we have no new update. Just keep, keep fighting in prayer for this precious baby girl. Um, hey, and then finally, I have a, I have a special announcement um, that I'm really just been looking forward to making this. It's out of the whole big story here. If you've been a part of this church for any amount of time, you know that the Lord is just moving in this church and moving in the next generation. Okay, and we have all kinds of young people who are saying, I am giving my yes to the Lord, take me to the nations. And God is just taking one by one all over. We have people coming back from serving on mission trips. Um, We have some that are going. We have have a team. We have the Johnson family and another team that just came back from Burundi. Uh, We have Grace uh, McGilvery, who just got back from Papua New Guinea. Um, We have... uh, Emma and uh, Joshua Lyons, who just got back from Kyrgyzstan. The list goes on and on and on. And and this fall, we are sending people to the nations, okay? Micah and Sophia are going off to the nations. Jackson is going off to the nations in this uh, mission training thing. And um, and so I'm going to bring up two uh, sort of daughters of this church, such special ladies, and I'm going to tell you what they're about to do. And so could I have Shelby and Sav come on up here? Um, yeah, come, come on up here, Shelby and Sav. Here, one of you go on this side, one of you on this side. These are two um, just sweet daughters of, of the church, okay? And um, both of them, through the ministry of this church these last several years, uh, they, were, they were both at Lebanon High School. People in this church reached out to them, showed the love of Jesus to them. Both of them gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Um, this is so meaningful to me. I'm, I'm, a, like, I'm a third generation Christian, which means my parents followed Jesus. I mean, my kids are third generation Christians. My parents followed Jesus. I followed Jesus. My kids are following Jesus. And, and then I, these people, Sav and Shelby, like they are first generation Christians. Do you know what that's like? Is anybody out there in the crowd a first generation Christian? Um, that means that like you're the first of your family to say, I will follow Jesus. I'm going wholeheartedly after him. And they've both said yes to the mission field. And so, um, 
So for example, Sav is leaving for the Middle East, okay? Um, she was there last year. She gets off of a plane and she puts on a robe and a hijab, is that the word? Yes, yes. And she is going, I'm not even going to say the name of the nation, but to a place where it's 94% um, Islam. It is illegal to plant a church. It's illegal to convert to Christianity. And she is going to bring the hope and light of Jesus Christ there. And I'm just so proud of you. Just so proud. So, so proud. And she'll be the same. She is going to a YWAM training. And they are just like, and she's saying, wherever you send me, Lord. And she's going to, she doesn't even know the name of the nation yet, but it's going to be a crazy, awesome nation that needs Jesus. And I just love the narrative, okay, that we are sending people out. And, um, and so one of the reasons I said uh, that they are first generation from their family is that um, they, are, they are raising funds to go, okay? And so actually after the service, they are going to be doing iced coffee and flowers out there, okay? Sav leaves September 11th. The reason she's flying September 11th is that is the cheapest flight to the Middle East, Okay? <laughs> So she's leaving September 11th. She needs about $3,000 to get there, okay? <laughs> Shelby still needs about $2,000, okay? And, and often, like, like as a family, they need their church family to come around them and to say, let's send our young people to the mission field. I know Ashley and I, one of the greatest things that we just love to do, we take uh, portions of our finances, we support our local church, we support missions, and then we are just overjoyed to invest in people going to the nations to bring the gospel of Jesus to the ends of this earth. So I just wanted to say, when the service is done, I would love for you to buy some iced coffee over there. I would love, guys, I'm just going to call out to you that your wives need some flowers, all right? You can buy them there, and most of all, would you just support these young ladies as they head out to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth? I love that. I love being a church um, like that. Amen? Amen. All right. So I'm going to have Shelby read the text for this morning, and then, Sab, would you pray for this morning? And then we will, if you have your Bibles, you can join us in John chapter 13. And um, why don't you stand with us? Just in reverence of God's word. And Shelby, why don't you read, and then uh, Sab, why don't you pray? Yeah, 1 through 17. Hello? Okay. Yep, yeah, you're on. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that this hour had come to depart of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered to him, what am I doing? You do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash your feet, you do not have share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is not completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That's why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on the outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I, then, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you have also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do, just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Yeah. Jesus, thank you for the power of the cross. Thank you that the cross allows us to enter into your presence. Jesus, as a church, we just plead the blood over baby Olive. Yes. And we thank you for your faithfulness in her life. And Lord, we just continue to come together in unity and ask for full healing and restoration by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. 
Jesus, you're beautiful. Let us see your face and let us hear your voice. Thank you that your word is powerful. Would you reveal yourself to us through your word during this sermon? In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks, guys. We love you. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good to see what the Lord is doing. Um, yeah, John 13. Once you meet me there, if you're not there already, um, we are going to do what we've been doing all summer, which is to behold, to behold Jesus. All right? In a world of distraction, we're calling us to behold, right? Um, in a world of, that's often defined by 